This is an Egyptian dagger made out of solid bronze, and I'll show you how I made it. I cast this dagger the old-fashioned way in sand. This has been done for thousands of years, particularly during the Bronze Age. For this project, I use Petrobon sand, which is specially made for pouring molten metal and casting objects. The goal here was to make a three-dimensional void in the sand in the shape of a dagger in which I could pour the molten bronze. I removed all the excess sand and smoothed it out really well because I wanted to create a plane in which later I could separate the two halves of the mold. For this project, I used a plastic model of an ancient Egyptian dagger. For the side of the dagger that went down first into the sand, I had placed some baby powder. The people that do a lot of professional sand casting aren't gonna like what I did next because I just basically pounded this thing in so that the bottom half of it was embedded in the sand. For a lot of objects, this technique does not work, but for something shaped like a dagger, it worked just fine. I did some extra compression with my fingers where the sand met the edge of the dagger, and now I was ready to place baby powder all over this bottom half of the mold. This baby powder acts as a way to separate both halves of the mold after I buried the top half of the knife. This is an important step because if the sand sticks together or to the dagger, it really can wreck the whole thing. I placed the upper frame so that I could now bury the top half of the dagger in the sand. I scattered a small amount of facing sand over the dagger and then proceeded to bury it. And this is where I packed the sand in really tight around the dagger. I vigorously pounded the sand into all corners of this upper frame and I removed the excess. The next job was to actually get that plastic dagger out of there so that I could have a three-dimensional void in which to pour the metal. You'll see here why I used the baby powder and packed that sand in so vigorously. As I pulled this upper part of the mold off, they're often cave-ins because that sand is suspended in mid-air. I gently laid the upper part of the mold on its side and then I worked to gently pull the original plastic model of the dagger out of the sand. This is always very tricky. Now that I had an impression of the dagger in the sand, I had to figure out how to get the metal in there. And to do that, I carved these channels in the sand and then drilled holes through the top of the frame so I could have a channel in which to pour the metal. I used a copper pipe to press a hole through the top of the mold and then just extracted it so then there was a place through which the metal could flow. At the tip of the dagger, I carved a little channel so that gases and excess metal could vent out the other end as I poured the metal. I used a smaller copper pipe to bore a hole for the vent. The next step was to put the mold back together so that I could pour the metal. I have to get these two halves back together just right, or when the metal goes in there, it won't flow symmetrically and mirror the shape of the model. I use wooden guides that I've tacked to the side of the mold and also some lines that I've drawn to make sure everything gets back exactly the way I want it. The next step was to cook up the bronze. And for that, I used scrap copper wire and tin. And the ratio was about 85% copper and 15% tin. I tucked the metal in the crucible and then put the crucible in my furnace. This is the part I love, <laughs> light this thing up. Check out that flame. I'll show it from a different angle. <laughs> Look at that stuff going up. I had to get the metal up over 2000 degrees to turn it into liquid for pouring. Copper has a beautiful orange glow right before it begins to melt. And with the bronze alloy, the tin makes everything stronger. When I had liquid bronze, I turned off the furnace and then got ready to extract the crucible. I wear a whole bunch of protective gear when I do this. I'm particularly worried about my shins and feet because I have had splashes. That's why I wear those aluminum spats and shin covers. I also wear a face shield and a smock because the heat is so incredible coming off this stuff. I pulled the super hot crucible up out of the furnace 
and it had the liquid metal inside of it. At this point, I had to work very fast because I wanted to skin the slag, but at the same time, not allow too much heat to escape from the molten bronze. I have to keep the liquid metal hot enough so that it flows readily into the shape of the dagger in the sand. And this is especially important with a thin thing like a knife blade. If the metal's too cold when I pour it, it'll go in there and just form half the dagger, which totally sucks. I used lifting tongs to grab the glowing crucible and pour the molten bronze into the hole that I'd put in the sand. The molten metal glowed like hot lava as I poured it and I could feel the heat radiating off it onto my face. After I got done pouring, I was actually quite concerned because usually I like to see excess metal bubble up through the vent. When that didn't happen, I was concerned that either the metal was too cool and solidified too quickly, or I had poured an inadequate amount of metal. When either of those two things happen, it will wreck the entire project. So I always like to make sure the metal's hot enough and that I cook up enough of it. Here's a different angle of the pour. And as you can see, there were gases emanating up from the vent hole but no metal came up through there. I wasn't quite sure how this was gonna turn out, but I let it cool overnight, and I especially like to do that with bronze because it'll get super oxidized if I pull it out of the sand when it's really hot. As I looked at the dagger, I was totally stoked with how this thing had turned out. It was very well formed. I could see where the liquid metal had gone in, solidified, and the entire length of the blade had formed just like I wanted it. The next step was simply to clean off all this extra metal and polish this thing up a bit. I cut the excess metal off the tip of the blade where some of it had gone up the vent hole. And then what I did was cut off the excess metal that went into the handle and that was where the metal had gone in. I did quite a bit of grinding and brushing of this dagger to get it cleaned up to where I wanted it. For bronze, I like to use a brass brush because it seems to brighten it up quite a bit without me having to sand it. And while I've sanded a lot of metal projects, I really hate doing it. It's messy and I just don't like it. Most people think of bronze as being kind of a dark brown color like you see on old statues and stuff. But with newly poured bronze, it has a beautiful milky gold color. There is a granular appearance to sand cast bronze, which I actually like quite a bit. Bronze swords and daggers that were cast anciently show signs of sand casting just like this one does. Now I'm gonna point out here that I cast the handle in metal as well, just because this thing's decorative, I'm just gonna have it as something on display in my house. Please like and subscribe for more content like this. I think Pharaoh would think this dagger was totally rad.